Hi, everybody. How are we doing? Good? All right, cool. So, making longevity mainstream. We've actually heard a couple people talk about this today. So this is our website. And before I start, I just want to thank you all for having me today, especially the Dublin Longevity Summit. Um, it's fan been fantastic getting to know most of you the last few months since I formally entered the space in a full-time capacity. And I am looking forward to getting to know most of you. I know I've been going around saying, okay, we'll talk. Please don't hesitate to come up to me. Um, this is a nonprofit advocacy organization. It's been around for quite some time now. But today, what I'd like to do is formally reintroduce the organization and give some context to what's behind this phrase, leading the movement for longer, healthier lives. It will directly tie into the importance of making the longevity movement mainstream and how together we will take stronger swings at getting there. I'll start off by saying that the work we're doing amplifies all of the work that you're doing. Secondly, heads up, like I said, you're gonna hear a lot of parallels to Dr. Khan and Bernard Siegel's earlier talks, which actually demonstrates true alignment. We're not here for the money, we're driven by the cause and always have been and we're here to move the field forward. Okay, so at Lifespan.io, we are driving this virtuous cycle that I will illustrate with some bare bone references. Okay, there's a spotlight. We will recognize the interesting and important research being done. We'll then have professionals create strategic content and then amplify it to the general public through expansive media capabilities, there is no other organization that focuses solely and holistically on the longevity movement and has the existing potential, existing uh, or potential reach that we have. And then we create funding pipelines. The funds that come from that are then used to drive further research. For some, it creates readiness for institutional investment and or decentralized support with emerging tech like Web3. As we are community-based, we then facilitate collaboration opportunities across the board. This continuous cycle ensures initiatives don't funnel to a point of obscure research that nobody knows about. But why do we do all of this? So first, let me start with a positive. The industry, this community, it's uniquely altruistic, at least for now. But as things become more mainstream, it's going to change. Just a warning. The goal is to raise all boats. A single success benefits all of us. The reason that we're doing this is to combat fundamental challenges that everyone in and out of this room is facing today. Specifically on issues that hinder the acceleration of progress. The extremely complicated science, that's you guys. There are several other major challenges we're focusing on here at Lifespan.io, but today I will highlight two making the field more accessible for funding, and public awareness and support. So let's start with money. Let's look at the US for a moment. According to Andrew Steele, aging causes 85% of deaths, but only receives 8.5 of all government health research funding. The NIH budget is less than 0.1% of US healthcare spending. Aging research is hugely underfunded. Private investment also has its challenges, which I will get into shortly. And lastly, there's citizen contribution. And I'm gonna reference some of the approaches we're taking to combating these financial accessibility hurdles for the sake of the broader community. Okay, so one historical challenge concerns the difficulties associated with attracting private investment in longevity biotech. Many of you guys are entrepreneurs here, you know. Let's pay closer attention to the why. There are misaligned investment ROI ethos because by nature, investors are seeking quick time horizons. All research has long time horizons, but none such greater than longevity, where you might have to wait 50 years to see proper results and or revenue. Perhaps biomarkers or something you're working on will help with this, hopefully. I will address a compelling solution in a few slides when we speak about closing the gap and creating additional pathways for exciting individuals to contribute funding to the field, excited individuals. So, for investors that are curious or already aligned with the longevity mission, Lifespan.io has its long-standing longevity investor network, where we enable collaborations by connecting longevity startups, institutional VCs, and angels. 
Lou Hawthorne from Nanotics, and others with us here today have been a part of this growing network for quite some time. So here's what else we're doing at Lifespan and how the citizen contribution piece fits. Under our logo, it says crowdsourcing the cure for aging. Crowdfunding is a consistent call to action, which helps a movement on multiple levels. These initiatives are highly visible and very engaging. It raises funds for research, it democratizes that research, it raises awareness beyond your typical eco-chamber, it engages the broader public, it provides greater visibility, it has the potential to go viral. Beyond just leveraging this mechanism in its basic form, Lifespan.io is also taking the lead in building new, highly effective, synergistic crowdfunding models that leverage emerging tech like Web3 and blockchain. Now here's one example. Gitcoin Grants is a platform where projects can attract quadratic funding, which is a democratized and scalable way to match funding activities. Olimar Medvedic and Keith Comito were very excited about studies in both mice and humans and the potential for gamma therapy to slow or prevent the progression of Alzheimer's. So they launched this project and leveraged crowdfunding as they knew there was a greater opportunity whereby citizens, AKA the crowd, could drive the research faster. Contributions that came in through this platform are now helping them to grow their team, finish their prototype, and ultimately establish a first-in-kind decentralized clinical trial using their self-developed non-pharmacological remediation device and software. FYI, the founders of this project are the co-founders of Lifespan.io. And this specific campaign is live today on the Gitcoin grant platform. This project is a great example of how crowdfunding can help you start moving the needle on combating the citizen contribution and public awareness challenges I outlined. It also helps, and this is important, with the invest, excuse me, it also helps with the private investor ROI challenge that I highlighted earlier because a successful campaign demonstrates public interest and market potential, effectively de-risking the investment. So Lifespan has a long history of enabling citizen contributions through crowdfunding. We fiscally sponsor many projects and organizations. The Last Generation to Die documentary with Tim Maupin's movie production studio. The Pearl Project with Ageless RX. It brought in more than $180,000 and a lot of awareness. The NMN Mice Research Study with David Sinclair. The Rapamycin Trial with Brad Stanfield. Even the online educational resource component of the A4LI lifespan is fiscally sponsoring this first and only 501c4 that you heard about earlier. And it's focused on creating social and political action, and Dylan's here today if you want to learn more. So let's go back to this virtuous cycle that I talked about. It's one thing to crowdfund, it's another to crowdfund effectively. It's not easy without power to amplify. Nothing I've discussed today can be effective without proper access to large and interested audiences. So let's do a deeper dive into the amplification and some of the associated challenges and opportunities. Before we even get into how to access large audiences, it's important to understand the upfront challenges we all face with the general public. The longevity community as a whole is currently experiencing serious symptoms of paradigm shift. At the end of the day, the rate of progress, the ability to get mainstream attention and recognition is heavily influenced by biases. To overcome this and all the other challenges I've discussed thus far, closing the gap and activation is critical. Perceptions of longevity biotech are vast, very vast. Instead of objective inputs, this status quo is a result of widespread constructions of reality. Take a good look at this word cloud. How many associations do you personally agree with? How many do you disagree with? For the sake of provoking new thinking, what if we were having this conversation 20 years ago? What if it was 20 years from now? Does your position change? Are you prepared and empowered to effectively argue your opinion and persuade someone that you're both actually saying the same thing? So let's do a deeper dive into the biases and the varied perceptions associated with longevity. We have an idea in our minds of how things are and it affects how we and especially people outside of this field see things. 
I met a woman whose entire family thinks her interest in longevity is irrational. They claim her belief in the potential of longevity research is equivalent to believing that Santa Claus is real. Nine times out of 10, random people I meet assume longevity means anti-aging, and some would argue that this is more representative of cosmetic surgery and Botox industry and mindset. Others will immediately react with an unsupported argument that we shouldn't even want to live forever. Our organization spends a lot of time thinking about these perspectives and perceptions. We put together a helpful resource on our site for the community to reference, which I linked above. The takeaway here is that biases are deeply ingrained in our psyches, period. Closing the gap. How do we close this bias gap? Our nonprofit mission is to build and leverage the bridge. Strategic content creation and thoughtful narratives that are tailored to different audiences with different biases is one of our focus areas. Media and audience reach is one of the most important mechanisms to successfully making something mainstream. In addition to our newsletter subscribers, hundreds of thousands of curious people visit our website to learn from educational writers and responsible journalists. We also have a very successful annual conference series. Furthermore, we have teams of professional content creators and video producers that drive our four YouTube channels, as shown in this funnel. Each channel has a different audience demographic. Life Noggin is an entertainment, excuse me, an edutainment. It's an edu educational entertainment channel that lives at the top of the funnel and attracts over three million subscribers who represent the, J, the general lay public. So as we narrow down this pipe, the subsequent channels have audiences that become more scientific, more mission aligned, and different types of content are produced to match. What we've created here is a complete educational funnel that both informs and engages the public, effectively inspiring the birth of new longevity advocates, investors, researchers. Audiences are strategically funneled through closing the gap between the scientists, the funders, the politicians, the public. Regarding social media platforms, it's also important to reiterate that crowdfunding is not easy or effective without strategically positioned megaphones. This is the true purpose of our social media capabilities and expansive reach. Strategic collaboration is another tactic we love. We partner with other powerful channels and organizations, but specifically with YouTube, the channel that you see here. 20 million subscribers have viewed all of their content over two billion times. The public watched our Ending Aging video collaboration more than 8 million times. More than 250,000 liked it. 30,000 gave good public feedback. Remember, a majority of these people aren't very familiar with longevity biotech research. This video partnership is a perfect example of how the public narrative can be changed and how this type of advocacy and public engagement makes the ground fertile for all of your longevity initiatives. More specifically, various Lifespan Longevity Investor Network investors express that this particular video influenced them to lead a seed fundraising round with a startup in our network. Let's let that sink in for a moment. That's really powerful, really powerful. Also last week, our Life Noggin channel team published a video collaboration with SENS on senescent cells designed specifically for the lay public. I recommend checking it out. Share it. Quick question. Do you see value in having content that makes your research and its importance super easy to understand so you can widely distribute it to family, friends, investors, possible pharma partners, policymakers? Good content strategy and audience awareness helps us meet people where they are and guide them towards a greater understanding and appreciation for the longevity movement. The next step is activating them. If the pandemic has shown us anything, it is the importance of clear communications between science and the public. If the pandemic, oh, excuse me, how much the public understands which audience you're targeting and the respective narrative being leveraged, 
matters now more than ever before. There are massive benefits of having a public that is excited and on board with the idea of longevity research. So let's make science more human together. Have you guys read this book? It's awesome, it's about cancer, and it was actually just referenced before. This woman on the top right, Mary Lasker, she played a massive role in revolutionizing not just how cancer was treated, but how the public perceived it. She transformed the national dialogue with various PR strategies and turned cancer from a pariah disease into a global war on the disease that people wanted to be a part of. How did she do this? She understood the importance of storytelling. She understood that the general public had an idea, a bias around the word cancer. Sounds pretty familiar, right? But there wasn't alignment with how doctors or patients thought about it. Clearly, there was a narrative issue, a lack of visibility and receptive audience, and a desperate need for engagement strategy. There are two very big things that Mary did, advocacy and funding, or fundraising. She took the story of an individual cancer patient, a child, Jimmy, and strategically used media capabilities to amplify the new narrative. Once the general public was activated, she helped provide a pathway to transform interest to active engagement. This, this is what Lifespan.io is slated to do for the longevity field. We work with everyone in the space, and we are supporting collective actions to fight the war on age-related disease and transform the problem into a global priority. For what it's worth, the YouTube partnership that I highlighted earlier reached more people than the number who, turned, who tuned into Mary Lasker's initial media efforts back in the day. History has demonstrated that when you have a powerful social movement that engages the mainstream, it's like pouring jet fuel on its rate of acceleration and progress. We covered a lot today, but I actually didn't get to cover it all. I hope that new ideas and considerations were prompted and that you all have a clearer vision of what it takes to achieve our shared goals and make the longevity movement mainstream. I wanna thank, again, the Dublin Longevity Summit and Martin O'Day for having me here today and giving me this platform. Lastly, Lifespan.io has been around for a long time and we have a fantastic reputation among the community because of amazing people like yourselves who have been donating and working with us so we can keep our lights on and provide value. For years, many of you have been on our star-studded scientific advisory board. Thank you, George Church, Vera Gorbanova, Judith Campisi, David Sinclair, Irina Conboy, and everyone else. Today, our nonprofit is at an inflection point. Many changes are on the horizon, and we are so excited to leverage our history, partners, old and new, and presence in this community. A quick teaser of just a few of the possible opportunities ahead that we have the infrastructure to support. Multifaceted PR strategies, student-run initiatives, documentaries, movies, games, video games high-profile collaborations, Hollywood celebrity influencer engagement, collaborative research projects, and novel funding initiatives with the latest emerging technologies. The impacts that these initiatives would have is indescribable. Just like everything Lifespan.io has now, everything I just listed would be available for the community, you, to take full advantage of. As I mentioned in the beginning, the work that we do supports and amplifies the work that you do. In order to up-level, the collective mission absolutely needs your support. Please, donate, keep donating. Feel free to reach out. We would really love to hear about your research, your company stories, your challenges, your successes. Come to us with your thoughts and ideas about how else we can continue to accelerate progress and achieve making the longevity movement mainstream together. With that, I leave you with this image and an obvious reminder. As a nonprofit, our incentives are precisely aligned with the mission. We have no other incentives. 
We are here for the cause. And at the end of our day, our goal is longer, healthier lives with the people that we love. Thank you, and I'm happy to answer questions.